Over these next few slides, we're going to look at how you can calculate the standard cell potential, or E0. The standard cell potential is a quantitative measure of the tendency of reactants to proceed to products. So kind of like how you could look at the delta G value, if it's negative, it will tend towards the products. If you look at the K value, if that's greater than 1, it leads towards the products. Here's yet another way to determine if a reaction is thermodynamically favorable towards that product side. Um, when we calculate those standard cell potentials, that little not, the little zero there next to the E, means that the reactions are taking place under standard conditions, in other words, 25 degrees Celsius. And then the chemicals that we'll be looking at uh, for making those calculations, the assumption is that they are either solids or one molar solutions. So if you look at this uh, copper silver battery setup that we have in this picture and the voltmeter hooked up to it is indicating a voltage of 0.46 volts, we're going to make the assumption that that reaction is taking place at 25 degrees Celsius and that the copper and silver solutions in those beakers are both one molar. In order to calculate this uh, cell voltage, you need your balanced half reactions. And if you know the uh, standard cell potential there for each half reaction, you could add those half reactions together to get the overall reaction. The problem is, is that you can't measure the uh, standard cell potential there, E0, of a half reaction directly. You have to compare it to something else. Uh, it's kind of like when you say that you're five feet tall, you're comparing it to a standard of a foot, that you're five times greater than that foot. Well, if we want to know the standard cell potential of a half reaction, we have to compare it to something else. What's our standard? So there's something called the standard hydrogen electrode, also known as the SHE for short. Um, you were given in today's folder a file that shows you a whole bunch of cell potential values. And so I want you to take a look at that chart there and look for this reaction where you have two hydrogen ions uh, added to two electrons. This is a reduction reaction going on. We're gaining electrons, bringing down our oxidation number from positive one down to neutral hydrogen. And we just assign that reaction as having a cell potential value of zero. And then everything is in relation to this standard, the she. So if we hooked up a zinc electrode and a zinc ion solution, that half cell, um, if the other half was the she, the standard hydrogen electrode, and we're looking at this picture and kind of taking it all in, you could see that the electrons are leaving the zinc electrode headed to the right over to the she, the standard hydrogen electrode. So the zinc is losing the electrons and the she is the one gaining the electrons. So if the zinc is losing the electrons, Leo the lion goes grr, that means that the zinc is being oxidized. Since it's the source of the electrons, it's the negative electrode. We call that the anode. Just like anion is a negatively charged ion, the source of those electrons, the zinc, um, is our anode. The she in this setup is the one that's gaining the electrons. The electrons are heading towards it. It's being reduced. Since it's accepting the electrons, that makes it the positive electrode and therefore the cathode of our battery. When we look at the cell potential there, um, we can add the half reaction for zinc to that half reaction for the she and get an overall net value of 0.76. If you look at the picture there on the previous slide, on the voltmeter it has 0.76 volts is what's running through there. So what that means is if we add our two half reactions together, we can get the overall reaction. So we know the overall is 0.76. We know the she is zero. So that means that the zinc half cell reaction has a value of 0.76 volts. 
you can also find that reaction on your standard cell potential list that you have in front of you. Uh, when you look at this reaction, zinc is a better reducing agent. In other words, it is more easily oxidized than our hydrogen is. Uh, zinc does a better job at losing electrons than hydrogen in this case. Let's look at another half reaction hooked up to the Xi. Uh, notice how the electron flow this time is reversed. Now the electrons are leaving the Xi on the right hand side and going towards that strip of copper. So now the Xi is the one that's losing the electrons. So the Xi is being oxidized. If it's being oxidized, that means it is the source of the electrons. The electrons are leaving the Xi. So we say that's the negative electrode, the anode. The copper is the one that's gaining the electrons. It's going towards the copper. So the copper is gonna get reduced in this reaction. Since it's the one that's accepting the electrons, the electrode itself must be the positive electrode, the cathode. When we're looking there, at your uh, cell potential for that copper half reaction. When we compare it to the Xi, the Xi is zero. The overall reaction, when we add it together, has a value of 0.34. And so then that must mean that the half cell reaction has a, a cell potential value of 0.34 volts. You can also find that reaction on your list of uh, cell potentials there. In this reaction, copper is the better oxidizing agent. It is more easily reduced than hydrogen because the copper on the left plus two goes to neutral copper on the right. It's gaining electrons and it must do a better job at doing that than the hydrogen. If the hydrogen was the better oxidizing agent, if it was more easily reduced, that means that that neutral hydrogen would turn into a negatively charged hydrogen, gain electrons on the other side, and that's not happening.